Hey, and welcome back, everyone. What's good? This is Chris from Sound Freaks, back with another quick pro tip for you. Today, we're going to be talking about aftertouch. Uh, and just to explain um, very quickly for those who don't already know, uh, aftertouch is basically just pressure. Okay, it's pressure information that's being sent from a MIDI controller or DAW to a synth. Okay, it's it's pretty much that simple. Uh, we'll use a traditional MIDI keyboard as an example, uh, but there are many different types of MIDI controllers out there that can send uh, aftertouch information. Okay, if you're a machine user, you probably already know this. But anyway, um, just to get back on task here, let's say you have a sound, you trigger that sound uh, by pressing a key on your MIDI keyboard, and then you can apply uh, varying amounts of pressure over time to send uh, aftertouch modulation information or commands to uh, your synth or DAW. Okay, so let's take a look at this um, in like a real example. So we'll open up Massive here and we'll go to our browser and let's just find a quick Sound Freak sound. I think we've got a couple of, yep, there's one right there, right at the top, Aftertouch Monsters. We'll go, ahead, go ahead and load that sound. Looks a little something like this. We'll trigger a couple notes, short, Okay, cool, nice, simple, basic bass sound with some delay, but if you press and hold. There's this nice swell that emerges after a, after a moment. Uh, but we can also send uh, aftertouch information, and that's what this sounds like. So I'll trigger a note, and now I'll press. Okay, that was aftertouch. I'll do that again at a different register. And something lower. Okay, so it's a very uh, simple way to make your instruments a bit more expressive. And traditionally, uh, you'll probably see a lot of simple sounds uh, programmed with aftertouch to affect or modulate uh, a subtle pitch bend or maybe just a touch of vibrato and it's meant to add just a touch more realistic uh, expressiveness to a sound but um, uh, you know we here at Sound Freaks we tend to think about things a little bit differently and with a sound like this we felt there was a lot more potential to tap into. Now you can of course at any time alter these patches any way that you see fit and add or remove parameters from the aftertouch assignment and really you know dial this in as your own sound perfect for your own project. Um, but let's not get too far off task here. Um, customizing things is great, but how do you actually take advantage of something like aftertouch in a patch like this? Okay, uh, that type of of aftertouch programming is obviously intended for maybe just a touch more than just simple performance based uh, actions. And let's be honest, you know, most producers aren't up on stage all the time. Most of the time. Uh, they're working really hard in a studio, making stuff sound absolutely perfect. And to make your modulation changes sound uh, absolutely perfect in your music, then uh, that's where automation comes in. Okay, so that's the that's the big takeaway here in this lesson is automation. Okay, now normally you're going to access your automation controls for your plugins and standard uh, DAW operations through your arrangement window, but aftertouch is actually a MIDI modulation. Okay, uh, so what we're going to do is um, here. Let's just record a quick little four bar. We'll play like two notes and add some uh, aftertouch information in there really quick. So here we go on that. Okay, so there's four bars, uh, and we'll just open that up. And here is our MIDI, MIDI editor down here. It's also called a piano roll, and this is where you're actually going to find your MIDI draw or MIDI automation uh, down here. And in Logic, it's actually called channel pressure. In fact, in a lot of DAWs it is. And you can see that uh, these automation curves here look very similar to the type that you would see in the normal arrangement window. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and all you have to do is just click and drag on a parameter and uh, you can then begin changing your automation in real time. Um, in fact, we could even add a little automation curve tool here, bring this up to be a bit more 
uh, dynamic. See what this sounds like. All right, so really, you know, the sky is the limit as far as what you can do with this type of automation. Okay, but how about that for a cool uh, quick pro tip, right? Uh, uh, Aftertouch uh, on this particular uh, patch is routed or assigned to modulate several different uh, parameters uh, throughout the synth, but just to point out a couple here, you can see that it's assigned to control the amp parameter on the feedback module. It's also uh, probably, yep, it's up here in the EQ on the boost. Um, I'm sure that we've got some filtering and some phasing happening there as well. That's what it sounds like anyway. Um, and uh, just a quick reminder, most sound freak sounds, you click on the attributes tab of the synths that, that have such a feature and you look in the comments area and you'll find a quick little uh, tip from us how to use the, our sounds. And uh, indeed for this one, it's all about the aftertouch. So um, dig into these sounds, find the ones that have uh, aftertouch uh, programmed in and have some fun. And then take it to a whole new level uh, by programming automation um, so you can actually capture that magic and play it back exactly the same time after time after time. All right. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Uh, we're going to see you again really soon. Cheers.